Russian forces have exhausted many of the reserves they built up for their intensified offensive operation in the summer of 2024. The Institute for the Study of War ISW estimates that the ongoing Russian offensive operation is likely to conclude in the coming months, according to the ISW. The Russian military command is likely focused on increasing mechanized offensive activity to allow Russian troops to advance across open fields and secure positions in nearby settlements along the front line, which can then be used as a launching pad for preparing and initiating offensive operations aimed at achieving operational goals such as capturing Kurakov in the western Donetsk region or taking Pokrovsk. Autumn weather conditions are also likely to restrict the maneuverability of Russian infantry. The autumn weather will cause many windbreaks, consisting of deciduous trees, to lose most of their leaves, providing less concealment for Russian infantry groups during the fall of 2024 and winter of 2024 to 2025, making Russian soldiers more vulnerable to reconnaissance and tactical fire from Ukrainian drones. Russian forces are unlikely to halt their offensive operations after the autumn season of muddy conditions, although adverse weather is expected to diminish the effectiveness of Russian infantry. Russian President Vladimir Putin and the military command are pursuing a strategy aimed at preventing Ukraine from accumulating manpower and material resources to counter the initiative across the entire theater of operations by maintaining constant offensive pressure on Ukrainian troops along the front line. They are likely to continue adhering to this strategy despite seasonal limitations on the maneuverability of mechanized and infantry units. According to the ISW report from October the 9th, Russian forces advanced in Vovchansk, Kharkiv region, along the kupiansk svatov kremina line in the Siversk area and southern Turetsk. Ukrainian forces made gains during a counter-attack east of Pokrovsk, while Russian forces advanced southeast of Pokrovsk. A tornado was seen tearing across a roadway in Florida on Wednesday before Hurricane Milton made landfall. Tornadoes were also spotted in other areas of the state throughout the day. As of Wednesday evening, three Florida offices of the National Weather Service had issued a total of 133 tornado warnings. The Miami and Tampa offices issued 49 warnings each, while Melbourne had 35. Hurricane Milton made landfall Wednesday along Florida's Gulf Coast as a Category 3 storm, bringing powerful winds, deadly storm surge and potential flooding to much of the state. Hurricane Milton has crashed into Florida as a Category 3 storm, pounding the coast with ferocious winds of over 100 mph and the hurricane has also spawned multiple tornadoes across the state, serving as dangerous warnings of Milton's arrival. The cyclone had maximum sustained winds of 120 miles per hour when it roared ashore in Siesta Key, Florida, at 8.30 p.m., the Miami-based National Hurricane Center said. The hurricane was bringing deadly storm surge to much of Florida's Gulf Coast, including densely populated areas such as Tampa, St. Petersburg, Sarasota and Fort Myers. The hurricane was downgraded to a Category 2 storm as it moved through Florida later Wednesday evening. It was expected to remain a hurricane as it crosses the Florida Peninsula Thursday before emerging in the Atlantic Ocean. Due south I-75, tornado in progress. Large tornado in progress, west-northwest of the Miccosukee Service Plaza off I-74. Large tornado in progress. A team of people from the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration are seen in the fuselage of a WP-3D Orion aircraft to collect data on for hurricane research. The video, posted on X, 
by the NOAA Aircraft Operations Center included a caption noting the bumpy ride into Hurricane Milton, the team can be seen sitting in their seats as they try to remain stable in the turbulence that the plane is going through alongside equipment that is used to collect data.